crypto and fiat is almost the same bucket such a big bubble that either it has to just collapse itself or it will continue to be worse and worse and worse and maybe naturally die very powerful people decide that they are going to issue a piece of paper called money they decide what's the value of it how much worth it has and who gets it first they're building a parallel reality that is really like beautiful you will actually be happier you will finally see the world and you will be full of hope don't read the headlines or the news collect information to build your own opinion. We have a thinking crisis. It's easy <laughs> to use Bitcoin, <laughs> to give it, to earn it, to get it back. Why Bitcoin and why work in Bitcoin? Why Bitcoin? Why work in Bitcoin? Um, why Bitcoin? Because this is really something that sparked or helped me to gain back the hope um, in, in the world and humanity. Um, a long story, but yeah, from every single perspective, even though before I, I started working, let's say full time in the, in the Bitcoin space, um, I used to have many different projects contribute, um, having my fiat job or later, which is also in my professional um, career, um, being naive, I, I work in the web three space, uh, trying to change something there. So even before, um, even before I, I made this transition to, um, to, Bitcoin only uh, and full time. Um, it was something that was giving me hope and energy. So um, yeah, seeing all the rotten, let's say, reality around and, and so many sad things or people who are not thinking for themselves and um, yeah, all these kind of things, you can feel depressed, stressed. Um, and then when you go back or you know that there is this parallel, so to say, space and, and completely different um, reality, growing, thriving, yeah, it gives you hope. Um, so yeah, that, that's why Bitcoin and that's why working in Bitcoin. So I finally took this step and said, no, um, I want to do it full time, um, from whichever angle. And yeah, actually I'm working in a few different projects. So yeah, <laughs> it takes quite some time, but it gives a lot of satisfaction and fun. Yeah. So you worked before in web free crypto altcoin world? Actually, I have marketing background and I've been also working in the banking industry and in the trading industry. The recent things, like, I mean, recent, I mean, like five, maybe six, seven years ago. Um, then, um, yeah, I was hired as well um, in, in two or three different companies, Web3, um, crypto, crypto, let me put it this way. Uh, still, you know, I was so naive and it was like this stage. I don't know if you had it or your um, audience can resonate with this, but when you're in some stage of your Bitcoin journey, you are still like, oh my God, it's so amazing. I, I'm going to change everyone. And doesn't matter that these people are doing this thing. I will tell them how amazing Bitcoin is and how different and I'm going to uh, change their perspective. But after some time, you see that not necessarily it, it works. So now I'm in a stage of like, okay, let them know that I exist. If they need me, they can come to me instead of me going to there and, and trying to evangelize this way. Um, but I was so naive thinking that, yeah, if I will be working there from inside, I have, um, let's say, a power, quote unquote, to change things, to, to help these people uh, from that perspective. So, yeah, I, I, I work there as well. Ah, really cool. But then you shifted from like, I, I always put like fiat and crypto in, in like one bucket. Uh, for me, it's like an extension to that. Like it's, it's, it's kind of the similar thing, even though there are like difference between this, but uh, it's for me the same thing. And then you shifted now to Bitcoin only. Right? That because honestly, and this is kind of personal, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it mentally anymore. So as you say, and I, I will try not to be toxic, but, um, and, um, yeah. When you said that um, crypto and fiat is almost the same uh, bucket working in both and just to remind again it was banking and trading as well for a while and before even like let's say big different corporations um i realized how disgusting sometimes this thing is from inside even disgusting in the sense that people who are operating there they are like really enslaved mentally as well. And then going through another world, this web free crypto, I realized that this thing is even more disgusting because you know, the fiat culture and not to excuse anyone, you can say that you were born into it. So you have really nothing to compare or you are kind of like really um, manipulated in the sense that you have to be there. So it's sometimes very difficult to go um, out of your comfort zone and see something else. The difference for me with all the crypto web free, and this is what I saw from inside, um, is done on purpose, consciously knowing what's the problem with the fiat system and how to use similar mechanisms in a way to not necessarily do great things. I'm not saying everyone in this space is is trying to scam and, and has bad intentions, 
but how overall this phase works uh, is more disgusting and more rotten than the fiat system. And then after some time being in these two different worlds and in my, so to say, free time, being engaged with different Bitcoin projects, trying temporarily to help different people that I know from the space, I was feeling really like torn and, and bad. So I said at the very beginning that why Bitcoin? Because it gives me hope. But after some time, if you are, let's say, jungling in between these two worlds, you cannot really mentally handle it anymore. So I noticed that I can, I, I was more um, stressed during my working hours. I was more, yeah, sometimes even as, as people say toxic because I didn't have, so starting from this naive perspective later, I was just losing my hope and my energy. And then I was just like, you know, very sharp. I'm also a very direct person. So I, I just decided that it doesn't make sense. I, I don't see any progress and it's better that I just allocate my time and energy um, in my life to, to what I love, to what I believe in, um, instead of trying to change something that is like, instead of trying to shape the stone, you know, um, so yeah, it's interesting for me that because when we are talking about the Bitcoin community, sometimes like a certain group can be really toxic. Uh, and I think, I think it's even good for Bitcoin. I think that, uh, to have some really advocates for you that are completely, um, intolerant of, uh, and I don't know if, if this, this was what describes you in back in the days, uh, I, I don't know, but. Uh, in completely intolerant of something that even looks a little bit like crypto or fiat, uh, gives the, gives a certain edge to the Bitcoin community. I was that like one year ago. I'm getting way more softer Bitcoin maxing nowadays. I'm, I'm more becoming like a free market maximalist because if you become a free market maximalist, I think you will get to be a Bitcoin maximalist and you will get only in Bitcoin uh, with, with education and with time. I respect and accept that there are other people and they are in, in crypto and, and doing stuff. I, I, I choose not to do that, but I think that it's fair to, that they are here. Yeah, th this is interesting what you just said. I, I wouldn't then call it like my personal opinion. I don't necessarily like uh, us being toxic or others being toxic and of course it's everyone's life and their own hands but i believe again if you understand the mechanism actually actually the genius behind bitcoin and, and how that money is literally your time and energy right if you are toxic you are kind of like losing it so instead of um let's say wasting your time and energy on being toxic you can convert this energy and time into something that is more positive. But what I like and really appreciate or respect, um, and I would like not to see it disappear at any time, it's, it's being conservative in, in some, some ways. Um, so there is a difference between being toxic, attacking, and also very often living in your own bubble versus being in some cases more conservative, meaning, okay, I stick to my values, I am consequent, and, um, and I'm more critical, let's say, uh, when it comes to novelties. So it's kind of also related to this long time preference. Okay, I just don't jump to the water immediately, right? Um, so yeah, this is how I kind of see being conservative in a healthy way, of course, because you know, the world is uh, built on the balance. So you can have a scale from, let's say one to 10, and you can be very hardcore um, conservative, which is also, in my opinion, not healthy. So yeah, I, I believe in the balance. So everything has to be balanced in a healthy way. And very often, if we are doing mistakes, it's even good because we can learn from it. But yeah, and you can decide on your own on, on how much you can be from one to 10 on a scale of, of stuff. But I, I think um, it should be more or less balanced. So in a healthy way, not in a healthy way that doesn't hurt anyone around you and yourself as well. Do you think that the uh, Bitcoin community is too toxic? Oh, I, I don't think so. Honestly, this is one of the greatest uh, communities because it's, it's huge and I don't know everyone. One of the greatest communities that is really pure energy um, and it's so um, diverse uh, and it's so empowering and full of hope and, and so much talent and creativity and so many different experiences. And, and it's very, very interesting. But of course, there might be some individuals that are toxic. Um, and it's not me to judge them. It's me to decide if I want to be surrounded by them or exposed. 
uh, or not. That's that's very true. Um, let's go back to uh, you worked in the banking industry. You, you worked with with, with uh, trade file and, and th those things. It's really interesting for me for people that were already in that world. They have a deeper view on that, and they know better what's wrong with the fiat system than people that didn't experience that firsthand. So you, you, I think you described it before, like disgusting with the, with the, uh, trade fire and with, with the bank system and that it grouped is even more disgusting in that. Uh, what's, what's wrong with the fiat system? What's wrong, uh, in your, uh, view with, with that system? <coughs> Sorry. Um, I think that the biggest problem is that people who are operating within the system are not even aware, uh, or they don't understand how it works. And it's really like one huge scam. Um, that somebody decided on <laughs> and keeps it running for their own profits. Um, and many people, and this is what I also saw in, in the banking industry, people who are working in there, they don't even fully understand the mechanisms. Um, they don't know the basics. They don't even know the history. I mean, come on, fiat, we are very often saying fiat money. It's much, like, it's not only the 19, uh, like, you know, when the gold, gold standard was removed. We have a history. There was a ancient Rome. There was the first money, I think, issued by China or somewhere in, in Asia. There are so many lessons to learn, and, and it's a very similar pattern. And people these days working inside in there, they don't realize that it doesn't make sense, that there will be no retirements, what's inflation, how all these things are just using others. And this is like a true Ponzi scheme. So back in 2017 or 18, when I was working in one of these companies, so to say, and Bitcoin was already a topic, especially because of the block size war, you know, like quite a big headline and the price was going up. So people were saying, oh, this is Ponzi scheme. Come on, you are working in a Ponzi scheme in all the possible means, and you don't even understand how it works. Um, also, maybe if an interesting thing, um, we had in one, one of this, um, um, experience we had visits from the european central bank and the guy was giving us presentations how digital euro how amazing it will be also saying that there will be no banks and everyone was clapping and i was thinking like what's wrong with you people the guy is literally saying that you are not needed and you will lose your jobs and you are still clapping because it's cool you don't even understand but yeah speaking about the uh, fiat as money um it is just rotten you know like that the entire system how it's built and designed. And, and I think it's such a big bubble that either it has to just collapse itself uh, or it will continue to be worse and worse, and worse and worse and maybe naturally die. But if not Bitcoin, there will be some other people issuing some other type of money. I don't even want to talk about CDBCs, the biggest evil ever, uh, which is another threat possible to happen, but it, it's just rotten. It's like, yeah, one huge scam. Yeah, I see, but this is an interesting, a digital euro. Uh, I've, I made actually, yes, like yesterday, like the, uh, right before the, this episode is, is an episode around CBDCs and why it is and someone actually working with banks, uh, they're consulting them and they are trying to orange bill banks. And, uh, because like they see also CBDCs as a major threat for banks, not only for, uh, for, for our freedom, but also for the freedom of the, of the banks. Yeah. You mean them. like commercial banks and, and, uh, like different than the central bank. Yeah. yeah because, uh, but, but you see, this is another thing that when we are saying banks, many people, they don't even know how all these institutions operate. They, many, um, let's say an average Joe doesn't even know that there is something like central bank who is responsible for issuing money, uh, distributing it. So this is also like a huge lack of knowledge. And what I experienced, even people working in the sector, they don't really understand how it works. <laughs> so, yeah. How would you describe uh, this fiat Ponzi scheme, this uh, central bank and commercial bank uh, system in, in, in simple terms to someone that is an average show and is like, oh, like, why is it an, a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme? Because um, I don't know if it will be easy. And, and you know, like, it, it's hard to say for an average Joe, if you don't spend some time with an average Joe to understand what kind of problems he might have and what kind of examples um, or analogies can uh, resonate with him, right? But let me put it this way. Um, some group of powerful people decide to issue something they call money. Money is literally um, a mean, or it doesn't have to be even a physical thing, because money is literally time and energy. So in theory, for your work or your effort, I could pay you, giving you bread and some time to rest, right? But let's say I can issue a physical 
I think we call money. If the two of us agree to exchange it and if it has any value because somebody else can accept it uh, so that you can get something from them, let's say purchase, it works as money. So some very powerful people decide that they are going to issue a piece of paper called money and they decide what's the value of it, how much worth it has. Uh, and who gets it first? So while issuing, I mean, like printing it, also adding numbers, because many of these things are digital now. Um, many people also don't use cash anymore. So who can have access and who can get more access to it? Um, and because of this overprinting or overproduction of this thing, it's naturally losing value. So if you have millions of the same items, they are not that unique. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a more complicated topic of how the economy works. But if you have more of something is less unique. So naturally it's losing its value. So your purchasing power, so what you can get for that is also getting lower. But on the other hand, there are some people who get almost for free a lot of incentives and power being very close to this issuer. So yeah, you are losing, you have kind of like a vicious circle, almost impossible to get out. Uh, and somebody consciously is keeping playing this kind of game. That's a game I said Ponzi scheme, keeping you first of all, by regulations obliged to use it and to be there on the other hand yeah it's it's, it's definitely a complicated topic uh, it's also the 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 one obvious thing for me is always the credit score that's basically um it it's it's when you have a pyramid scheme or like a ponzi scheme there's always uh, lines of production and the first one uh, and the higher up you are on the ponzi scheme the lower the cost of something is whatever the item of the ponzi scheme is it's for example if you're selling energy drinks the one on the top uh, becomes the energy drinks for 10 cents sells it for 12 cents to the next layer so yeah. sells it for 12, 14 cents to the next layer yeah, and in the in the fiat system for me that item is is just credit and just the money and the cost of money is basically um the 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 credit score the interest rate or what, what you are paying for for making money which is an absurd thing that we can make money <laughs> but but if if we uh, agree to that then it's like the the high up uh, you are and the, like central bank and there are banks and there are governments and there are big corporations yeah. and they're like high, high net worth individuals and then we come slowly slowly to the average show uh, and they are paying different rates, like big corporations can maybe lend out money for like 1% or 0.1%. Uh, and another uh, average show has to pay like 5%, 10% consumer credits, like 20%. Yeah, and absolutely. And this average show is already kind of born into debt uh, because this is our reality. So it's again, this vicious circle, you have almost zero chance as long as you stay in the system to go out. So. It's also very luring or like, um, yeah, cheating your brain because through credit, you have a feeling that you can afford more. And, and these kind of conversations I used to have a lot with, with my friends, um, that, you know, people these days, they think they are richer than their parents and grandparents, and they don't see that the amount of time they spend to earn some money. Let's say in the past, somebody had to work, I don't know, five years to be able to afford a house or a car, right? In theory, through the technology, we should be able to produce these things cheaper and, and faster. So they should be more affordable. But on the other hand, now you have to work 50 years. I mean, to buy an apartment, a house or whatever, of course, different countries, different price, but you have to like pay, I don't know, mortgage 20, 50 years. And it's still giving people because of credit cards because of in theory access to to many cool things and and like this uh more um a short-term perspective and and like this um yeah reality that you think you own the world and the progress you kind of you are cheated your brain is cheated that you think yeah it's it's greater you don't you don't see that you are within every almost year shrinking your own reality and and, and your future more and more so it's all like that completely it's not even about taking credit even if you don't take a specific credit from the bank you are already in debt. you your kids and, and their kids it's interesting to, to think about that you also wrote an article uh around how we are living in the matrix and, and matrix is a great comparison to uh to bitcoin mm. like how did you make that analogy <laughs> okay cool uh thanks for for reading it um, I mean, Matrix is, I think, or a Matrix trilogy is something that 
hardly like everyone knows it right uh there are some people who are huge fans but it's very difficult to find somebody who doesn't know um, the title and then especially in the bitcoin world we are using this analogy to to the matrix very often like exit the matrix see through like um free yourself take the orange pill like very similar to morpheus did to, to neo in the movie but what i realized is actually when we talk about it as bitcoiners sometimes for outsiders it might sound kind of scary and as far as there are many similarities between our reality being like completely free thanks to bitcoin uh, free thinkers freedom fighters there are many similarities to, to this movie i actually realized that there are more differences and we should maybe talk about these differences because we are not like i don't know if did you watch matrix or because this yes is, i watched the first what? one like first i'm one. only only the first one ah really okay so personally i only didn't like the the last one um but i'm a huge fan so you know, in the for anyone who, who didn't watch it or watch it a long time ago, the people who left the system that is oppressing its citizens and like kind of like soaking them even um, to let itself um, to, to keep alive, like the, to keep the system alive. So people who left it, they were kind of like constantly stressed and they were really like hiding uh, in some crappy places and and they were all the time uh, forced to to fight back and then they didn't have any like nice hopeful future and this is actually a huge difference between um let's say a bitcoin based world or or a bitcoin um stuff like world we are thriving i mean we are not people who are hiding and and all the time stress of course we might have some smaller or bigger fight though we also say that bitcoin is a peaceful revolution we don't need to like literally directly fight we are building a parallel reality that is really like beautiful and and it's completely opposite to what was shown in, in in this movie so i wrote it because i wanted to remind us that even if we like something like myself a movie we should always read in between lines and stop talking and thinking about it from one perspective because i do believe that critical thinking and thinking for ourselves is very important b i wanted to remind us that when we talk exit the matrix maybe to um an outsider we should also show that, yeah, if you exit the matrix, let's say uh, using Bitcoin, you, you leave the system. It's not like in the movie. You will actually be happier. Like you will finally see the world and, and, and you will be full of hope and, and you will participate in one of the most uh, impressive things, I believe, in a human history. Like really building a parallel reality that is, it's the only hope I, I kind of see these days. Um, knowing everything I know about geopolitics and, and problems with money and all the craziness of the fiat world, yeah. Uh, it's uh, that that's really interesting what you, what you said with showing people how it is to be a Bitcoiner. It's, I think that's the the most efficient way to orange build someone is if a Bitcoiner in his surroundings is living a really good life if he's just a happy successful person uh, and he sees that oh like, he lives on a bitcoin standard and he says like oh like uh, a lot of my success a lot of my happiness comes from as having sound money that's the orange pill everyone needs like they're like Absolutely. oh he he's doing great like i, I want to yeah. see why he's happy, doing great you are healthy you are uh yeah this is the, like the the example uh, to others, of course, they need to know that you were in Bitcoin, but maybe just be a happy, healthy person. And then somebody will come and ask you why. And then you can say, thanks to Bitcoin, thanks to this. So we, yeah, we, we shouldn't. Um, and I believe everyone has their own stage. I've been also there that, yeah, um, that I wanted to tell everyone the entire world around how great Bitcoin is and why they should learn about it and, and stuff. I, I, I quit that moment and I'm just in that stage. Like, yeah, I just do what I can. I, I love everything I'm doing actually. Um, and people know that if they need questions, if they need answers, they can come to me. Even if I will not be able to answer some stuff, I am kind of, let's say, well connected in the community. I can point them out to either a resource, a resource or another person. So I'm not going to them anymore. <laughs> I'm just there waiting if somebody needs, uh, needs me. I'm, I'm, I'm available. Yeah. Really cool. Um, what are some of the, similarities to the matrix movie what are why, why are people uh giving matrix such a bitcoin movie vibe i i think by the way there are more movies than that matrix is just one of the most popular uh, i also wrote an article about it like truman show um, death poet society equilibrium uh, many of them but why matrix 
Mm, I think because first of all, it is um, from the technical perspective how the movie was done in, in 90s is just like a classic, is a legend. But the similarities are, yeah, you are living in a system that is really parasitic and it's using you. So people there who that didn't watch the movie, they were connected to some kind of machines and their energy was drained to make the system operating. So actually our entire system, the fiat um, system, a uh, fiat-based system is and, and culture is exactly working the same way. So you are um, like really living in a cog from the very beginning, the moment you are born, like even giving examples. You go to school, it's programming you and already making you to think in a specific way and you start this kind of path. There was somewhere a very interesting meme showing this kind of journey from school to, to university work. So you are already born into that, like in the matrix, you are connected to this machine, your energy is drained to make this system work so this system makes you like needs you so that is soaking your your power to stay alive i, I think this is one of the, the biggest similarities and also another similarity is that many people are not aware that it even exists this is also one of the points in the plot of this trilogy but there are some people who do understand that it's all fake but they still prefer to stay in there for the comfort, convenience, so all the fancy words that we hear a lot in the mainstream media. Um, so yeah, there are many similarities. It's actually a very genius, um, genius story, especially considering it's that old. Yeah, and it, it would be interesting to have like a, a Bitcoin movie around the Matrix, like a, a Matrix themed Bitcoin movie. Uh, that would be, I, I would love that to see. You know, uh, I think it was Guy Swan. He reworked a uh, few scenes or the, one scene, sorry, from Matrix. Uh, later, I can send you the link. So he just replaced um, the dialogue between Neo and Morpheus, giving some kind of like more Bitcoin uh, oriented topic. And it's a feat and it's amazing. And now with all this AI filmmaking, I think um, it's only the, let's say, the only limit is our imagination, what can be done and created. So, yeah. But it will be pretty cool, yes. Oh, that's really, really cool. Um, you mentioned also Truman Show. I, I, I love that movie a lot. Like I, I watched it, uh, I think already like two, three times. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a movie that like, I don't know, I think like 10 years or five years ago. I don't know how, how long ago, but I think at least like four or five years ago that I watched it the first time. I don't know even when it came out. Um, but that's a, that's a really, really cool movie. Uh, to look at. And then the first time, the last time I looked at that, I was a Bitcoin already. And I was like, oh, that makes yeah. sense as a Bitcoin movie. I was like, that, that, I never appeared to me before that it was a Bitcoin movie. So a lot of people actually watch the movies and they, they never come, uh, Bitcoin in their mind. And then all of a sudden you watch those things and, Anytime something yeah. comes up like that, you're like, oh, Bitcoin. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> yeah, what... absolutely. Of course, this is a topic of uh, how much, let's say, for knowledge in understanding of Bitcoin, it's impacting what you see. So how much it's kind of like bias and your brain is trying to, to give you the message that you see Bitcoin almost everywhere versus how much more aware you are of the things. That's why you can understand some content um, from different perspectives. So it's, I think like two, it's, it's, it's very co complex and complicated. And sometimes we can see Bitcoin in almost everything, or sometimes we notice things that are resonating with the Bitcoin ethos culture and, and the culture that is opposite to, to um, the Bitcoin ethos better now because we were not aware of many things. So thanks to Bitcoin, it's not only like the knowledge of financial knowledge, but it can be also history. It can be the politics. It can be travel. It can be like so many different topics. There are many different rabbit holes. So within this whole journey, you're exploring more and more and more, and you are more aware or so to say knowledgeable or wiser. So that that's why maybe you can notice some stuff and see them differently. Uh, if you watch my podcast already for more than two times, you know how extremely passionate I am about self-custody. And the first very, very, very important step to self-custody is 
always getting yourself a hardware wallet and i have one for you here this is the bitcoin only edition from the bitbox my favorite single signature hardware wallet on the market another really important piece of self-custody if you have a hardware wallet is the backup of the seed phrase and bitbox made the perfect solution to back up your seed phrase they made a reusable steel wallet check out that beauty it's durable and extremely heavy if I put it on the desk I seriously feel for my own table it's so so heavy and durable I love it this is where my seed phrase is secure go to bitbox.swiss robin to get your bitbox and if you use code robin you even get 5% off of your complete order and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step and if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty and last but not least i have something completely new for you guys i partnered up with coin vigilante this is the most beautiful bitcoin timepiece that i ever saw created by anyone look at that beauty i love it so much coin vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much and i think the most uh the the common theme around it is always like there's somewhere along the line you thought critically like you are thinking in a critical way and then you're waking up that's like the truman show yep. when he touched like the the, the wall of of the of his world uh and he, he were persistent and, and went for it uh but then also the the matrix i think we all have that one scene where we like the he woke up from that uh that cell uh, yeah. and i think that's the the major thing like critical thinking if we get people to actually think for themselves and, and critical think, then they, they will wake up to the idea of, of, of Bitcoin. Do you also see like the, the critical thinking as like a crisis in, in our current yeah, thing? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And critical uh, doesn't mean to criticize everything. Critical, to, to, as you nicely pointed out, to think for, for, for yourself and also to be a little bit more skeptical about things, meaning don't buy any kind of topic in a shallow way on the on the surface whatever is thrown your way so try to decide on your own i always say like don't read the, the headlines or the news just um, collect information to build your own opinion so thinking overall we have a thinking crisis it, it's not only critical thinking um but i think it's also maybe partially done on purpose maybe it's a cause again almost quote unquote natural cause of the reality we are living in the speed again the problem with money so everyone is uh, you know like chasing something and, and also the mass consumption like pff, huge topic we could probably discuss for hours but i think we have a crisis with thinking these days people are prefer to be having a convenient life that somebody decides for them somebody thinks for them and uh, they don't need to do that anymore yeah that's that's true it's even dangerous like uh, i we, we talked before uh, about the teleprompter and i was not i i couldn't think of the word teleprompter 
And then I just use ChatGPT. And it's interesting because, yes, it makes it easy for people. I was like just giving the a ChatGPT, like, hey, can you tell me the word that is, you can put it uh, on, on a camera and you can read stuff on it. And ChatGPT was like, yeah, you're probably thinking of a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. uh, but it prevented my own brain to think of the solution because teleprompter, the word was in my head. Uh, so like even those new tools, and this was like just one very small example, but these new tools, like that we have a phone everywhere, we can right. Google and, and uh, ask ChatGPT about any, any anything that we want. We don't have to just like sit down and think. It's, it, even if you're like in a, in a friend's group with like five people uh, and like 20, 30 years ago, and if there would, would be some questions, we would like discuss and, 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 and really think about stuff like that. And now it's like, oh yeah, let's look it up on Google. Then we know the answer. Then we don't have to yeah, discuss. But I think again, coming back to critical thinking or being yourself, well, technology has always the, the downside or dark side and the bright side. So you see, you know that what you did in theory can be something dangerous and knowing it and thinking about it, it's a very good sign. There is no harm my personal opinion not everyone has to agree but there is no harm in doing things faster even sometimes using tools like ai to give you answers but still to keep in mind that this is only a tool not to trust it also 100 percent because very often uh, i think that might be kind of an issue in the future people will be asking chat gtp and it can lie i mean literally i'm sometimes also using it um as a as a model like not, i'm not talking chat gtp by the way there is a Paper Q, I think there is a um, AI tool. I don't know if, if you know it, but you can pay in sets for it. So let's say as a model, ChatGPT. So it, it can lie. So as long as you are aware that it's only a tool and it should make some of the stuff faster, but this is not to replace your brain. This is not to replace you as a human being and not something that you should be all the time depending on. It's all good. I mean, computers, cars. In the past, people were also saying that, oh, yeah, cars are really bad thing, the invention, right? They were joking. And come on, it's it's helping us to, to move faster. Um, internet, the same story. For a while, people and still probably some were talking the same stuff about Bitcoin, yeah? So there is nothing wrong in using things and making progress and using this different technology to progress and to do things faster as long as they are only tools. And if you keep it in mind, if you don't depend 100% of these things, uh, meaning, again, think, <laughs> um, it's fine. Why not? You can save a lot of time. You ask Trend GDP and you gave this interesting example that yeah, in the past, maybe people will be discussing stuff. Yes. But on the other hand, what I noticed that the most interesting and very deep, complex conversations are always happening when there are at least two, three Bitcoiners. So we might not be asking and this, let's say spending time on discussing, you know, what's teleprompter and, and what's the name of this thing, but we will get super deep discussions and complex topics about, I don't know, whatever, uh, astronomy related to the past history of some Asian civilization and whatever. So, you know, it's just like, again, balance, right? And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. Like, uh, it's, it's uh, overall enhancing us. Um, and I think, uh, if, if we use it right, as you said, like, if we have, if we use it as a tool and not a re as a replacement for our brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I, I don't think that AI and, and, and technology is bad for humanity. It's just maybe bad for some humans. Uh, because you can use even social media and podcasting on all those things really positively yeah. and learn with uh, consuming the right podcast or like produce something uh, and, and make something in the world. Or you can brainlessly scroll uh, four, five, six, ever eight hours every day on, on TikTok and, and, and Instagram Reels. So like you can use yeah. every technology with good and bad. It's like the knife you can... Yeah, stab someone and exactly. cut the and it doesn't mean exactly the fact that you can draw doesn't make water something dangerous right it's also something that we need so just to make a joke i mean we are living in a super super interesting times and in this sense if you use it smart for your own let's say advantage in a way that you progress and and you can uh, learn there are really sky has no limits i mean you don't need to anymore go and drive to school. You can work from home. I mean, not work from home to be stuck at home because this is also one of the narratives I think they are trying to sell us so that we are uh, not spending time with each other anymore. And it's a broader topic, but 
being able to work remotely from wherever you want or having at least this um, this um, advantage that you can decide how you work, where you work, how fast you can learn different things. You, you don't need to really like follow this um, pattern of, of the system, like yeah, go to this school, try to go to this specific university to get this job, like kind of like a, you know, blind path that is designed and the same way for everyone. There is so many things now that you can literally explore and experience thanks to the technology you can also travel so fast look at the two of us we are discussing different stuff and then there is hopefully at least 100 other people who will listen to it later and then they can still engage with the two of us right so this is amazing i mean it's just all about how we are going to use it and mm, yeah all about how, how we are going to use it let me stop just here that's interesting yeah um back to the bitcoin um what have what has changed in your life uh, once Bitcoin was there? Was you already really changed before and Bitcoin was just a natural puzzle piece before? Or did, did Bitcoin actually change something? I like to make this joke that I was born as a Bitcoiner. <laughs> uh, and I'm for almost 40 years old. So yeah, quite. It's connected to, um, I, I like to say it this way because I think I was always like thinking for myself, uh, questioning, uh, being curious, but not naive, uh, too, too naive, let's say. Um, my dad helped me to, to have many different values that I see that they are common values or very popular values among Bitcoiners. And I think that actually it was not me who found Bitcoin, but Bitcoin found, like not me that I found Bitcoin, but Bitcoin found me. When I was mature enough to understand it fully, because I've heard about it 2015, finish kind of 2017 i can say that i was aware and that was the moment that i started my journey before um, i was not mature enough to put enough time so it was my personality getting smarter uh stronger whatever we call it and then bitcoin hit in a particular moment and i think i yeah if not bitcoin if there would be something else than bitcoin uh probably i would also follow it because um because of my my personality and and I think this is my opinion that it's something common we have with this curiosity the thinking and the need to be independent like sovereign we do have as a community as, as bitcoiners that you have this kind of spark and it doesn't mean that in the future for example people will not be using bitcoin there will be no mass adoption because some people are using car not thinking how it works you don't i mean car is just a tool but there are also like car uh, people who are fascinated and they understand it more so you know like bitcoiner in your mind and heart these people they have something specific naturally in them like from the moment they are born like yeah it's really interesting how do you think it's it's sometimes interesting like uh i feel like the bitcoin community is really 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 unique in in the properties they have and in, in what they are doing what they are uh, uh, making out of themselves and sometimes i feel like we're just uh so unique because we're an early community and early communities are always like really um they have to think really critical because otherwise they would not be in the early crowd mm -hmm. um or do you think that Bitcoin and the sound money revolution actually changes something in, in society? Like is, is the fact that we are exchanging fiat money with now sound money with Bitcoin enhancing society? A very broad, deep topic. There is interesting book written by Yoni Appelberg. Uh, it's called um, Abundance Through Scarcity. That is more or less discussing uh, different civilizations through their course of how they developed or naturally died. And I think it's very hard to say how the future might look like if there would be something even like Bitcoiners uh, or Bitcoin films or Bitcoin art or something, because it might be just a natural thing and nobody will mention Bitcoin anymore. It will be just a reality. Um, it's hard to say or assume how it might look like in the future. But on the other hand, um, and another great book, The Fourth Turning, kind of like heavier to read, but I believe in this natural kind of cause of, yeah, there's the saying, strong times create weak men, weak times create strong men. So I think there are these circles. And in theory, it can even happen that when we are on the Bitcoin standard, maybe because of human nature, something will happen. And then we will again have to restart and then refresh ourselves and, and change the way of thinking. So I just believe there are these kind of... Um, circles or turnings this is also kind of a reference to matrix where the system was restart every time this 
in this meaning, it's not like somebody built a system. I don't believe somebody built a system that is designed for us that we have to stick in. But I do believe that the world after maybe hundreds of years and, and through all this complexity can change and evolve and, and then restart itself. So I agree that it's very early and maybe us is a very specific group as Bitcoiners, the way we operate, talk, think. And though we have similar barriers, we are so completely different, which is amazing. But maybe in the next 100, 200, 500 years, the circle or pattern will repeat because of something. So um, if you know what I'm saying. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great one. Like it, it, could, it, it could actually be very uh, fundamental to, to our human beings. It's, it's, uh, I like how you also like, uh, look at it in that lens. You also uh, are, as you said before, and I never heard that one, a naturally born nomad so like i i asked you before if you're a digital nomad and you're like no i'm a natural born nomad like <laughs> it's how, how, why do you describe it like that well uh not to bore you with my personal stories but i've been born in let's say multicultural family and because of how my parents were structuring their life already as a child i was dropped this house, I had, you know, many different grandmas and grandpas and aunties and stuff. And uh, like, yeah, I am the only child, for example. So it was actually good for me because I was always surrounded by people in different age. For some time, they were all my huge, big family. But it also forced me to be in different places and to adapt very quickly. And I think it's also something, of course, it will work differently for everyone. But I think this is also something that can spark this creativity and thinking. Because the same as travel not travel as a tourist, but as a traveler, can broaden your mind. You can understand yourself better than others as well. The same even as a kid not having one permanent place, though you have a house, but you are not spending that much time there. And it's something normal, um, even if it's just 50 or 100 or 500 kilometers from there, right? Because we were not traveling the entire world. But if you have this concept from the early age, it's almost like traveling. So I never had this thing like, yeah, I really have to like a tree put root somewhere. Maybe it will happen one day. Maybe I will stop my gypsy life as some of my friends are saying, but maybe not. What I noticed is that there, there are many advantages of it. I am not collecting so many items because I have to be mobile, that I am appreciating time with one of the most precious people in my life. A, my husband. This is my home. Where he is, is my home. I don't also suffer that much. Uh, where I have to leave something. I'm very curious and happy to be able to explore some stuff or go back to a country that I was spending uh, some time in the past. It's You can learn so much and, and you can um, be more free, light. So I used to live this way as a kid, uh, not my own choice, but I adapted, I liked it. And, and still I'm kind of, yeah, as you see, um, I, I got the virus <laughs> and I continue this way even as an adult. You have an amazing energy. I, I like it actually a lot. Uh, really cool. Um, before we come to the end routine, I'm, I'm curious, uh, by the way, I, I love the, I love moving around a lot. Uh, right now, I'm just like in my podcast studio in Vienna <laughs> 24 seven in like those three walls, four walls. Uh, and, uh, it feels really right, but I want to get to the place where I, I move around uh, more and more. Uh, and I just use, uh, now, Bitcoin conferences to do it. Mm -hmm. Like I, w I will be in Amsterdam. I might be in Lugano. Uh, I will be definitely in, in, in El Salvador in, okay. in November. So I use right now just Bitcoin conferences to move around a lot. Uh, and, uh, the other time I'm just in my base and trying to get, uh, oh. as many Bitcoin podcasts as, as, as possible yeah. around. But, but you see to, to, to what you just said. And again, uh, it's up to you what you want and what makes you happy because the disadvantage of my, uh, let's say, now I'm just thinking critically about myself. So the disadvantage about my lifestyle is if there is in theory a huge crisis, which can happen, I need to rebuild my own citadel from zero somewhere. Of course, the advantage is, is and this is one of the reasons why we travel, because we want to see where to escape if something, we want to have some closer relationships in this place, that place, and so on and so forth. But uh if something happens, you have your place that you are familiar with. So it's very, first of all, you have more time to build your own fortress or citadel, let me put it this way, to protect yourself. Second, um, you know the um, surrounding better. So you can, even if it's ad hoc, uh, you can do it in the last moment. For me, it's more challenging. So this might be disadvantage. And some people, they might just prefer to be more uh, settled. 
uh, because of many different reasons. So there is not, again, like a perfect thing. And yeah, I want to mention it so that it doesn't sound like they're both promoting like being nomads or gypsies, uh, because for some people it might be not interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you have to think about a lot. Uh, I was thinking of getting into a more digital nomad life, uh, but there's a lot of things to consider. It's it it has a great value for me in my life that I have my studio, my home base, where I can just like come here and make my podcast. Uh, like there are like one on on off button where all my lights go on, my microphone is working, my camera is in the position where it's always is like those kind of conveniences are really great to be as efficient as possible. And if I would move around a lot, uh, I would have to find out where's the best spot for the microphone, where's the best yeah. spot for the camera. Yeah, exactly. And you ever, you have to adopt a lot. Exactly. So there is never one side of the story. And I think the most important is also maybe after some time it will change for me and it will also change for you. I told you that, yeah, I'm uh, naturally or I'm born no one, but maybe, and, and that's the beauty of life, that we should actually evolve and, and adapt. We are not like a, you know, permanent creature that is from the very beginning until you die, uh, the same person. Actually, people who are like this, it's very sad life, <laughs> to be honest. So maybe if we talk, I don't know, in the next five, 10 years, you will be the nomad, the gypsy, and I will be the one saying, no, it's great to be in one place. So yeah. I mean, it's possible. It's, it's, <laughs> it's entirely possible for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, before we come to the end routine, uh, I want to get to know, um, what you are doing in the Bitcoin world. You are involved with the Bitcoin film festival. Um, what is that? And maybe also what, what else are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning. So Bitcoin film fest, because this is a, a funnier name, um, or less, less posh name of festival. <laughs> so a film fest is a Bitcoin film fest is actually a year round project. So from one side, it's kind of like aiming to be um, a dynamic hub, connecting people, filmmakers, cinema fans, inspired to educate um, and to like produce different content um, around independent cinema and Bitcoin culture, but not only uh, movies focus on Bitcoin, as we both just discussed a few minutes ago, there was Matrix, Truman Show. So yeah, uh, and so it's yeah like like a platform and hub. On the other hand, it is a really a festival, a film fest, film festival. So it's not a conference, it's a cultural event. I would even say like um, really community driven uh, cultural event. It's happening yearly or annually in Warsaw, the capital of Poland and a very interesting building. There is a story behind it. It was a gift from Uncle Stalin. And now it's like a rebel base, you know, screening independent cinema, quite often talking about Bitcoin and hosting a couple of hundred of Bitcoiners. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, once a year it's happening as a festival. Uh, we also did a couple of this, uh, we say, um, mini mini editions, so like road shows, uh, trying to organize some screenings when there are other co conferences happening. So what you said, you're going to Lugano this year. So last year we were also cooperating with Lugano, adopting Bitcoin as also our friend. So we were doing stuff um, this year. I don't know if we will have time, but for example, Alana, uh, she will be screening her movie in El Salvador, a very good one, Dirty Coin. So um, can recommend everyone who is going to, to adopting Bitcoin to watch it. So yeah, we, we do a couple of different things. I would say quite a lot considering that A, <laughs> it's not a full-time project paid, it's non-profit and it's just a small group of us friends who is running it, activists. So it's quite a lot actually <laughs> with, with what we are doing. Um, yeah, but the aim is uh, literally to, to help to build this independent kind of or power, power Oh, difficult word. So the um, alternative way of, of um, cinema industry, because this is also like coming back to the fiat culture, it's a very strong medium that can program you. Uh, and it's also limiting creators. And it's again, a vicious circle because the more limits there are, the specific content, the more of a specific content is produced. And then it's programming you in some specific way, blah, 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 and so on. Uh, so that's why we, we kind of almost naturally, we didn't create this space. We just saw that it's, it's there, it, requ uh, it needs support, uh, help, and we just made what, what we did. And our aim is to yeah, help all these um, independent creators uh, produce the content, access more people, and also cinema fans. Very often people are not watching stuff because they are already bored with the uh, seventh version of Spider-Man <laughs> or whatever kind of weird narratives. Um, so we want to give them fresh content um, 
yeah, that can yeah. resonate with Bitcoiners and not only. Plus, it of course will educate a lot of people about Bitcoin as well. So yeah, this is um, long story short about Bitcoin Film Fest. There are definitely too many Spider-Man movies out there. I can't <laughs> even count them. <laughs> it's like yeah. Spider-Man One, Two, Three, Homecoming, and stuff like that. That's, I, I don't even follow yeah. anymore. So yeah, but I know more. I, I think I watched the first three uh, actually, mm -hmm. but then where it's got the craze with Homecoming and. Uh, like three for a few others ones. Uh, I, I was like, ah, no, no. Uh, Iron Man, I was also really big fan of like, there are some great movies, but it's, it's interesting. Do, do you think that that fiat world, uh, is kind of incentivizing, uh, those weird movies sometimes just yes. those like virtual signaling m yes. movies? Yes. Yes. I mean, it might be seen or understood as a conspiracy theories by others up to them. Uh, I think whatever you want, I will be actually happy to discuss uh, this with whoever thinks differently. But I do think as a part of the system, I'm not saying it was built this way on purpose, though might be uh, Hollywood and the first movies and all this. I also wrote a couple of articles about it. Very interesting story. Daniel Prince is actually a very um, cool person to discuss this stuff. He, he likes all this uh, rabbit holes. The movie industry is also uh, something he a couple of times mentioned. But I think it is something that is on purpose selling us specific narratives so that we are uh, craving more. We are um, more stressed. So this is always an analogy I give to people. Look, you are watching all these Hollywood stars, great lives uh, in some specific movie series and stuff. So in theory, potentially you, you do it because you want to relax because your life is already stressful and you are chasing and chasing and chasing. So you are going to the theater or you watch something at home to relax. But at the end of the day, because there are so many different um, stimulants or like um, hidden stories, your brain knows it. So you are actually more stressed, which you don't realize. So then you keep consuming even more of this kind of thing. So this is just one, one of the examples. On the other hand, there are many different weird narratives that are sold to us in so many different ways. Movie industry is one of the easiest to, to, to use uh, for, for masses. So it's done on purpose uh, very often. Plus, if you are excluding, let's say, critical thinkers when it comes to creators, uh, if you kind of kill and censor their creativity, uh, and if they are not incentivized enough, obviously, even smart people will start producing kind of crap or trash, so to say, uh, because it sells. So it, it's a very complex, uh, huge mechanism, actually similar uh, to <laughs> mafia, I would say. It can, it can do a lot of harm. The the fear fear mafia is had captured it's everywhere. Yeah, literally. I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> really good. Um, perfect. Then uh, let's come to the end routine, as we're already over one hour or close to one hour. Um, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Let me bring back this thing about critical thinking and thinking for yourself. Um. I would actually leave answer to this to everyone who will listen to this episode. We were discussing directly many different things, but it's up to you who you will, what you want to learn from me, from topics or words that we just exchange in this conversation. So let me put it this way, a little bit philosophical, but yeah, think yourself. And if somebody wants to learn later or discuss something directly, they can always reach out to me uh, through many different channels. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's interesting. That's a really an, uh, I love that answer a lot. Uh, it never never came up that that perspective of that answer, even though that's that's one question I always ask my guests. The different the other end routine is where the previous guest is always asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Mm -hmm. So that comes from a previous guest. Uh, how can we accelerate the Bitcoin Lightning adoption? Oh, I think uh, Nostr Protocol is helping um, us to achieve this mission. So I would say go to Nostr and know and remember that it's well beyond social media. It's not only clients as Damas, Amatis and Primal, as most of the people think. It's a protocol. So there are blogging platforms, streaming platforms, thousands of, I mean, not thousands, but a lot of different tools. So I think this is how we can help uh, Lightning. Um, adoption. Also, um, to ask from time to time different people if they are accepting, let's say in real life, if they are accepting Bitcoin and then mention that there is something as Lightning Network. It's actually interesting because many Bitcoiners, the old school Bitcoiners, they don't even know that Lightning exists and they still want to transact on chain, which is kind of like interesting. 
uh, talk about it, learn if you have some skills to contribute in a technical way, do that. Um, so, and most important, most important, just use it, <laughs> use it whenever you can and in many different ways. Um, we are already like comparing to 2017, I can say, say set in a way that it's easy <laughs> to use Bitcoin, <laughs> to give it, to earn it, to get it back, to, yeah, uh, going back to Nostra, to zap others, I mean, show some small, a small appreciation. I mean, microtransactions, this is just like mind blowing. So, yeah, but I would say uh, Nostra is helping us a lot here, a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, you already mentioned that you, uh, people can reach out to you. Uh, where are your channels? What is the best way to, to reach out to you? No, okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I mostly mentioned here like Bitcoin Film Festival, but there is also another project I, I run uh, with, with my husband, like my baby project. It's a Bitcoin Junior Club. So it's a space for families, kids and teams. So they can reach out to me there if they are interested in, in these kind of topics. They can reach out to me and us overall through Bitcoin Film Fest, Nostr, Telegram for both of these projects. Uh, my social channels are less active. Um, you can find me on Nostr as Aza underscore. And then you should already see um, the rest. So Aza to be myself, I believe this is my handle. Um, you can find me on Simplex, Telegram, email. I mean, if you want, you will find me and I believe uh, we can put a link or two um, in the uh, notes uh, under the show. So, yeah. Absolutely. I always leave uh, one contact link for every guest. Uh, so like in for general, uh, because I still get that question <laughs> in the comments, oh, how can I reach out to him? Like on every podcast on every episode, there's at least one link uh, down in the description where you can find uh, the guest. Uh, even I had one guest on who who is not on social media at all, mm -hmm. like on, on no one, uh, but he made a special a telegram channel just for that podcast so people can actually ask wow. him questions uh so like there's always a link down in the description with the um guest contact if i if i forget that uh i get reminded by a lot of comments <laughs> usually <laughs> so uh if it's not there it will be probably there in like a in like a maximum one hour or something like that so always the check the description just link the uh click the link down below in the description and then you can find the guests uh, uh and find more context i think also like it, it's even interesting to know that because you can listen to the to the podcast and even parallel like uh, see their X channel, see what they're doing, see yeah. what they're writing. Uh, I heard that people are doing it actually like checking the, the guests out while uh, they're listening to the podcast. So uh, I just wanted to, to mention that like once in the podcast, because it's every episode, the link is down in below. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for being on. Uh, it, it was a, it was a great pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for your time now and for everything you are doing, because yeah, you produced a lot of good content. So kudos. Yeah. Thanks. So thank you so much. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow. 